Grace and peace in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have started the season of Lent in which we prepare for the celebration of the resurrection of our Lord on Easter Sunday. The word Lent is derived from 40, that is, the 40th day before Easter Sunday. However, there are actually 46 days in the season of Lent because we do not count the six Sundays. Why not? Every Sunday is a celebration of the resurrection. Christ was raised on Sunday. Early in its history, the church changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. In the Old Testament, the Sabbath was Saturday. Martin Luther's Catechism says the purpose of the Sabbath is to de dedicate a day to hear the word of God, receive the sacrament, and to praise God. For us, it does not matter which day is the Sabbath. It is valid to meet on, for worship of God on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or any day. For good order, and because everyone recognizes Sunday as the day of Christian worship, we accept the custom of Sunday as the Sabbath. According to the book of Genesis, God created the heavens and the earth in six days, and rested on the seventh day and enjoyed his creation. So for the people of Israel, Saturday was the day to celebrate the work of creation. Christ rose on the first day of the week, so for us the Sabbath is a celebration of the work of redemption and new life in Christ. Today, there are sects such as the Seventh-day Adventists who say we must observe the Sabbath on Saturday but we are not under the ceremonial law of the Old Testament, which was part of the covenant between God and the people of Israel. We are children of God through the new covenant in the blood of Christ. So we have spiritual freedom. Therefore, we celebrate 40 days of Lent plus six Sundays until the special annual celebration of the resurrection. For us, it is not a burden, it is a privilege. The concept of 40 days comes from our gospel reading today. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. This temptation of Jesus occurred immediately after his baptism in the Jordan River by John the Baptist. With his baptism, Jesus began his public ministry. But before the public proclamation of the gospel came temptation. Let's compare this story with Genesis 22, verses 1 through 14. As the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil, God sent Abraham into the desert to sacrifice his only son Isaac. God had promised Abraham descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and the grains of sand on the beach, including a descendant who would be the savior of the world. Isaac was the son of Abraham in his old age, the legitimate child of the promise, and God commanded him to sacrifice his only son. Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains which I will tell you. This was a test of faith for Abraham, not to deceive him, but to increase faith in God's promises. Abraham trusted God's word, so at the last moment, the angel of the Lord had said to him, Do not kill your son. There is the sacrificial lamb nearby. God also tested the faith of Jesus, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. No one can survive 40 days without food, we think, but by the supernatural power of God, Jesus did. And when the tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones be made into bread. Three times the devil tempted Jesus to use his divine power to satisfy earthly desires, therefore winning the admiration of people and conquering the world. If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. It is written that he shall give his angels charge over you, and they will lift you up in their hands so you will not strike your foot against a stone. He showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory, and he said to him, All this I will give you if you worship me. The Savior of the world was not a superhero. 
his mission was not to jump from the pinnacle of the temple and fly like Superman. His mission was to live as one of us and suffer and die on the cross in our place. Therefore, this test took place at the beginning of his ministry, but it was a preview of his passion during Holy Week. Like Abraham and Jesus, tests of faith for us are also to teach and prepare us for the work and destiny that he has prepared for us before the foundation of the world. Above all, we can trust God's word. Abraham trusted in the promise that God made of many descendants and the one who would be the savior of the world. And God said, your son must die. But Isaac was not the son that had to die, but Christ, as the son of Abraham, died on the cross. In this way, God fulfilled his promise to Abraham, also the decree that a son of Abraham must die. Jesus trusted in the word of God written in the Holy Scriptures, but the devil tempted him with biblical quotations such as Psalm 91. He shall give his angels charge over you and lift you up in their hands so you will not strike your foot against a stone. But the devil did not use all the Bible, only parts of it, to deceive. So it is important for us to study the Bible and hear the preaching of the word, because today there are many false teachers who say, the Bible says this, or the Bible says that. We must be able to say, like Jesus, but it is also written. To learn a little of the word is dangerous. We must fill our, our minds and our lives with the word of God as a defense against the snares of the devil. We should seek the kingdom of God first, and everything else will be added. There is safety from temptation, safety in the promises of God, and first and foremost, in the promise of eternal life. And we therefore have the peace that passes all human understanding. Stand for the prayers. <clears throat> Almighty and merciful God, we approach your throne of grace today as those who are prone to wander into sin because of the temptations of the evil one. Lord, have mercy. When we face the temptations of the devil who entices us to doubt and deny your true word, keep our eyes on Jesus who conquered Satan in the wilderness and on the cross. When we face the temptations of the flesh, our sinful appetites and lusts, keep our eyes on Jesus, who lived purely as our substitute and Savior. Lord, have when we face the temptations of the world, our sinful pride, and the quest for more possessions, keep our eyes on Jesus, who provides for all we need in this life and the life to come. When temptations come alluring, make us patient and enduring. Lord, have mercy. We praise you that you are faithful and that with every temptation you provide a way of escape. Lord, have mercy. Fill us with your spirit so that we may will say no to sin and yes to righteousness. Lord, have mercy. Lead us away from temptation and deliver us from evil. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus, who triumphed over temptation. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the merciful God, who is faithful and provides the way of escape from temptation and sin, empower you to live according to his good and gracious will, 
through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. Our final hymn is Jesus Lead Thou On. Before everybody empties out, I just have a brief announcement. Um, I heard from Pastor Niemeyer today. It was not good news. He is officially declining our call, so I'll be getting the official letter of declination probably sometime between now and Sunday. So we will continue our search for uh, our next pastor. Ha, ha, ha. 